Hello once again to all our televiewers, our loyal supporters, the faculty, staff, students, alumni of Foundation University, as well as those who are watching us from far and wide. It's another Thursday evening and we hope that you have made Thursdays as your regular habit as you tune in on Channel 6 of Phil Products TV Dumaguete and also of course uh, streamed live on the Facebook page of Foundation University and we are here on iGreyhound. Yes, and we make uh, every effort to make sure that our Thursday Day evenings are something that you would be uh, looking forward to and something that you would remember after you have watched our episode. So for tonight's episode, friends, this is again no exception. Although our guest for tonight's episode is no stranger to I Greyhound, we have had her here in the past, but this is one particular unit in the university that is truly on its toes practically every minute of the day every hour of the day every day every week and uh, so on because this is one organization that also makes sure that everyone who have something at stake and who would like to improve themselves would be able to hone their skills so may i introduce to all our viewers our guest for tonight's episode she is miss richie bongard and she is the director that is the the position miss rich director of what we call here at foundation university kina adman institute hi miss richie and pleasant evening welcome back to i greyhound Thank you, Ma'am Cecile, for having me here tonight. Yes, and I know that you have such a very busy schedule, and this is one particular time by which I would really allow you to, well, of course, invite later on our viewers and to expound on the so-called Kina Adman Institute of Foundation. So maybe you can take us back uh, to the earlier year or years of Kina Adman Institute, uh, Ms. Richie. Okay, um, Kina Adman Institute uh, initially it is only tech uh, that only offers tech book courses, and um, since I started last year, um, we have several um, plan out several directions for our unit. So Kina Adman right now has uh, three pillars, I could say. So first is on the uh, implementation of the tech book courses, and then right now. Um, we are also accredited assessment center and um, also we are partnering with DepEd as well in the delivery of the joint delivery voucher program. Okay, so uh, Foundation University is, I'd like to call ourselves no, as a delivering institution or as a partner institution. Now, you mentioned, Ms. Rich, the JDVP, no? uh, the joint... Uh, delivery deli voucher program. Okay, there you are. But this is something, the JDVP or the joint delivery voucher program is something that is not only unique or present in foundation but I think it's also being implemented in other schools am I right yes, yes. ma'am mm -hmm. uh, this is actually in pursuant to the Republic Act 10533 or the Enhanced Basic Education oh, yeah. Act mm -hmm. and um, the aim of this program is uh, for DepEd to partner institutions that has a capability uh, to improve the senior high school track, uh, mm -hmm. specifically on the TVL track, which um, we are actually accredited by TESDA. Okay. That's the first requirement okay. that we are accredited to offer these programs. Mm -hmm. So uh, in uh, Foundation University, we are equipped with uh, teachers, uh, our facilities uh, in order to cater the uh, senior high schools, which did, they do not have for at the moment in their schools. Mm, so okay. this is an enhancement to the education that uh, they have in their senior high school. Okay, so the JDVP, uh, Ms. Rich, no, is open both for public and uh, private school students, uh, those who are in senior high school and of course other, other uh, institutions also. Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay, now the partnership no, that Foundation University has with TESDA, you mentioned TESDA, uh, of course the Department of Education, uh, of course these are not limited to just these two government organizations, but we can also partner with local government units. I understand, Ms. Rich, no? And mm -hmm. perhaps you can tell our viewers uh, how differ, uh, the difference no? uh, between being an assessment center, which we are now here at Foundation University, a delivering uh, institution, and others that would require us to give certificates to our uh, beneficiaries. Okay, um, 
uh, being an assessment center is different as being a trainer, a training uh, provider okay. or delivering institution. Okay. Uh, if we are the training provider, then we provide training okay. to, uh, to all the students that are enrolled for a specific program. If you are an assessment center, that is also in partnership also with TESDA. Mm -hmm. We are accredited assessment center for 10 programs. Mm -hmm. And uh, as an assessment center, the role of the school is also to implement mm -hmm. the assessment. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay the, uh, we cater those who undergo training of the specific program. Mm -hmm. uh, after the end of the training, they are, or they will go to assessment so we can cater that one as well and uh, if there are also um, clients uh, that's in the industry and they don't need to undergo training mm -hmm. they can go directly uh, uh, submit application so that they will be assessed also okay. for a certain qualification yes, yeah good that you mentioned that now miss rich because my next question is leading actually or is is related somehow to what you mentioned about if you are already part of an industry you know whatever they may be and perhaps you can mention those programs that we are that foundation university is currently assessing no you don't need to go uh, you can you can apply for an assessment but who determines that uh, miss rich if for example an individual would be uh, qualified for assessment who, who determines it uh, we have actually self-assessment ah, guide okay. per program okay. so you need to uh, check on the qualifications if you can do this particular okay. competency then if you can check all the boxes okay, okay. then you are qualified for assessment okay so th so that's 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 the meaning no, of what we call as assessment but for example if one has to go through really the you know uh, attending classes and fulfilling the number of hours that is required uh, do we also determine that? Uh, do we do we uh, advise, for example, uh, future beneficiaries to, to, to do something? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, in the conduct of the training are also, we, from the start of the training, there is uh, a goal to achieve that these are the competencies that I will have after the training. So uh, during the conduct of the training, uh, I could mention, for example, in bookkeeping, uh, we have three competencies. So we have basic competency, common, and then core competency. So if uh, we are done with those competencies, there are uh, actually assessment per competency. Mm. And if you pass all those co competencies, then you are being recommended for a national assessment. Yes, yes. Okay. So for, uh, let us take one uh, skill or competency as an example. Y you can choose what would be a, or, or maybe I will choose huh? <laughs> because it's also something that I'm interested in. Uh, not events management anymore because I think we had talked about that in the past. But let me see. Something that I may have not done and would really like to go into. Okay, sige. Uh, well, top on my list is bread and pastry mm -hmm. okay bread and pastry no uh, what would be the yeah take that skill what, what would be the uh, or competency no what, what would be the the checklist of, of those who are already part of the industry in other words maybe I already have a bake shop or maybe I am going into uh, pastry making or uh, baking or mm -hmm. something like that okay Okay, uh, for the bread and pastry, which is I am not an expert. Ah, okay, of, lang. Oh, no problem. But, um, Maybe uh, in general terms. Uh, yeah, yeah okay. in general terms, I think they are taught how to uh, really bake pastries, and uh, based on what I have observed from the documentations mm. of my trainers, that yeah. they are also uh, like preparing um, pie, okay. and they are also uh, making or preparing cakes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think those are the. I believe that there are four competencies mm -hmm. that uh, the student must learn on the bread and pastry, but um, I cannot okay. uh, yeah. mention the yes, exact yes. Yes. Uh, um, core competencies okay. for uh, that. Uh, uh, I'll choose one that I know you are <laughs> you are actually teaching here. Bookkeeping, oh, am yes. I right? Yeah, um, okay, bookkeeping. <laughs> Sorry for that. Not the, I, I'm interested in the bread and pastry, even if I may not be able to do that, no? Or, or mm -hmm. really, uh, bookkeeping, Miss Rich. Uh, for bookkeeping and C3, aside mm -hmm. from the basic competencies uh, and common competencies, uh, for the core competencies, uh, 
First competency in bookkeeping is you should be able to journalize or record daily transactions of a business. So that's uh, the first competency that uh, they need to um, ace or pass. Mm -hmm. uh, second, uh, because bookkeeping is a process, okay. so if um, you cannot uh, do the proper recording, then it will there will be a major effect on the, mm -hmm. especially on the preparation of the financial statements. Okay. And then uh, uh, second uh, competency is uh, they have to post whatever they were able to record or journalize they have to post it in a ledger mm -hmm. as to which ledger is it cash is it receivables is it uh, those uh, mga accounting mm -hmm. um, accounts yeah. mm -hmm. okay and then after that they have to prepare a trial balance mm -hmm. and then that's the time that they can prepare the financial reports okay, okay. okay so they are like given um, it's actually an actual um, uh, what do you call this? Actual workshop yeah, for okay. them. Mm -mm. Uh, I give them uh, receipts, mm -hmm. so they have to sort it. Uh -huh. um, so uh, uh, yeah, it's it's like practicing mm -hmm. bookkeeping, really. Yes, no? Okay. Yes. Uh, they have to sort mm -hmm. the receipts if it's for uh, revenue journal, okay. if it's for purchase journal, and uh, that's um, what they will learn when they take the course. Is really. Uh, what if they will really work as mm -mm. a bookkeeper? Right. So they are given an actual uh, experience, uh, like let them feel an actual yes. experience as a bu uh, bookkeeper. Yeah. And then how many hours would that be, uh, Miss Rich? Uh, for bookkeeping is 292 hours, okay. oh, 37 oh. days if it's ah, 8 to okay. 5 every okay. day. Oh, 297 hours. 292. Uh, okay, 292 and then something like distributed in... Uh, how many days again? Uh, uh, 40, it four. depends on the schedule. If it's uh, a okay. whole day, then mm -hmm. it will be 37 days. So oh, okay. if it's only four hours per day, oh, then yeah. uh, it, it will be double, double the yes. number of days. Okay, yeah. Now, uh, in terms of partnering as well with LGUs, no local government units, and also, yes, we can mention, of course, the Department of Education. Um, do they pinpoint the individuals or the students or the beneficiaries uh, in other words what i'm trying to ask here is that how do they determine who among their constituents for deaf ed for example who among the senior high school students and even maybe teachers no they, mm -hmm. they would also qualify would enroll or would be a beneficiary to a particular program uh, for uh, i will mention first on the deaf ed okay. uh, side yeah. actually they are also screening students. Mm. Um, I believe it's the um, senior high school uh, grade 12 that uh, um, can be a beneficiary okay. of a joint delivery voucher program. So it is uh, on their end mm -hmm. um, as uh, partner schools to submit, submit the um, application to mm -hmm. DepEd that these are the students that's uh, willing to undergo the program. I believe it is not mandatory ah, and okay. not all of those who are enrolled in this um, uh, senior high school are beneficiary okay. of the JDVP. Okay, okay. Those that are interested and okay. would like to undergo okay. uh, to the training. Okay. But, but what do they, what, what, what uh, does DepEd say to the students, for example, even if it may not be mandatory or required of all uh, grade 12, no? Mm -hmm. Grade 12 students, what, what do they uh, tell the students in order to motivate them to uh, enroll in a JDVP program? Um, aside from uh, the skills that yeah. they will learn, it's also an exposure to oh, them. Yeah. Uh, it's an opportunity for them to uh, somehow um, feels how mm -hmm. it feels when you are uh, in college yeah. because uh, the delivery is they have to go to the university. Oh. For example, our beneficiaries are from uh, Mabinay. Okay. We also have uh, beneficiaries from Ayungon, mm -hmm. which is really far from okay. the city. Mm -hmm. So those experiences that they will be able to somehow be in mm -hmm. independent for this duration of 40 days. And um, yes, aside from knowledge, uh, the experience and um, maybe preparing them yeah. also for the college yes, life. Right, right. And and uh, you know, it's 
uh, it's an attraction. It's also an added uh, skill and an added qualification. Now imagine they have NC2 or NC3. Mm -hmm. That's the highest, right, Miss mm -hmm. Rich, uh, that you can get even if you have not yet reached college. Mm -hmm. no? But again, we will have to emphasize that it's not required really, no? it's not mandatory. So only those who may be interested. Mm -mm. Yes, okay. And these are all for free, no? It's on yes. a scholarship basis. Yes, scholarship is actually the debt ed yes. that's uh, financing the mm. training cost. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what is the role of TESDA then? The role of TESDA is on the assessment part. Ay, okay, okay. Oh, so, DepEd shoulders, no? The, oh, the training cost. The training co cost. They send, uh, uh, DepEd sends uh, them to us, mm -hmm. uh, to Foundation University, especially if we are a providing institution mm -hmm. no, or a partner uh, institution. Yeah. And how about for the LGU, Miss Rich? Uh, for, how do they go about it? Yeah. Uh, for the LGU, uh, they actually have uh, like point person mm -hmm. or TESDA point person in their muni municipality and there are uh, constituents that's uh, interested mm -hmm. in a particular program then they receive the application on mm -hmm. their end mm -hmm. and then I believe uh, that they will also recommend it because the scholarships that we are receiving are coming from the con congre uh, congressional district okay. so uh, they already screen the applicants and if they reach a certain like 20 applicants for this program they recommend it for funding and then uh, it's them actually the uh, the municipality mm -hmm. determine the needs of okay. their constituents and mm -hmm. then uh, once uh, they have this uh, uh, in uh, students that would not students uh, constituents yeah. that would like mm -hmm. to enroll yeah. then uh, they will forward or endorse it to mm -hmm. test that oh that's really very good no uh, there is no age limit mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah uh, or or perhaps uh, at least a high school graduate or senior high school no not necessarily no not necessary okay. but there are programs also okay. that is requiring to be high school graduate at least no at mm -hmm. least high school graduate now after yeah and then I, i'll be asking you about the assessment later on no? after a good number of constituents of a particular local government unit or municipality or city for that matter may be able to finish the entire uh, course or something, and then they get assessed. Or it's they, actually part of oh, the uh, package okay. that once they are trained, then they the, should be assessed, assessed as well right away after oh. the training. Yes, so that they could get the uh, NC3 or NC2. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay, very nice. No? And then when you now finally like uh, endorse them, would that be the correct term? Endorse them, something like they, are, they go back now to their, to their LGU. Uh, again, I think this was one question that I asked uh, because I would also be interested, and even our viewers would be interested. Uh, how how did the beneficiaries like make use of the the skill that they were able to learn from from Tesda, from Foundation University, and mm -hmm. from other delivering institutions? Yes, um, I believe that prior to the application, they have already set goals mm -hmm. as to okay. why they need this certain certificate. Okay. So uh, based on my um, uh, based on the previous scholarships yeah. that we um, delivered or implemented, mm -hmm. uh, some will use it, uh, some would like to acquire the skills okay. so that they can have their own uh, business, yeah. for example. Uh, because uh, it's a good thing also on the, uh, this, there is a certain scholarship provided by TESDA, STEP scholarship. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, for the livelihood. Okay. So aside from getting the training, they are also given kits. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for example, for baking, yeah. uh, they will receive also oven and mm -hmm. some other tools that they can really use for livelihood. Okay. So okay. Uh, yes, that's one reason. They set their goal that mm -hmm. they wanted to have this uh, business. Yeah. If, mm -hmm. And then some also uh, would like to have certifications for ranking purposes oh, yes. because they want to okay. apply. And some, it's also required mm -hmm. from their uh, institution or company yeah. that they need to be equipped with yes, this skill yes, so yes, that, yes. Uh, and uh, others also for promotion. Yeah, right, right. No? So various reasons mm -hmm. for somebody or anyone for that matter not to enroll or be part of uh, any JDVP program. But again, I'm curious, Miss Rich, no? it's not all 
institutions that are given this particular um, like, like benefit, the, the JDVP in other words? It's only a select uh, few, no? Uh, like it's actually, oh. you have to apply, ma'am. You're ah, okay, okay. that you want to be partner in delivering this program. Okay, then you are given the JDVP program yes. or something. Yes, okay. Because I, I know of men, na, well, a good number of institutions that do not have mm. a, a JDVP program. No, yes, okay. But once you get the JDVP, how do you call it? No, joint. Delivery, delivery voucher, voucher program. program. Yeah. Once you have the JDVP program, or maybe that's a redundant already, once you have it, uh, are there certain requirements or expectations that you would need to comply? L like what else would you be doing as the partner institution? Um, uh, for the requirements, um, they will only validate if we really have those uh, facilities, okay. we really have the uh, competent trainer for okay. that program. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe also the passing rate of uh, those students that were trained, so uh -huh. they have to undergo assessment. So ah, okay, it okay, also yeah. matters mm -hmm. the performance of the learners. Ah, okay. Who, who came from that uh, delivering institution or partner institution? Uh, uh, are there? What is the percentage of those who are able to make it? I think uh, um, for the th four oh, programs. I'm talking now about the assessment. Uh, the, yes, yes, for yeah. the four programs that we. Uh, we're able to successfully implement. Uh, we have 100% passing rate uh, in housekeeping and C2. Okay. We also have 100% passing rate in bread and pastry production. Okay. And for organic agriculture also, we have 100% passing rate okay, as well. Okay, okay. And uh, recently, in fact, no, you mentioned that for the past, uh, in the past months, no, I think June and July, mm. you were really all over the place visiting various municipalities, assessing, perhaps giving uh, like like uh, skills and so on. Uh, so how, how, how was it, uh, especially that you went from one like municipality to, to another? Or did they come here uh, to foundation? Um, or No, we conducted the assessment yeah, exactly. uh, in Bayawan. Yeah, That's exactly. actually last week. Yes, so yes, we were yes. staying there for last week. Um, uh, the programs that we assessed there were food and beverage okay, services, yeah. organic agriculture mm -hmm. production, NC2 as well, mm -hmm. and then bread and pastry production. Yeah. And yes. there's a, a huge number of students. They are also coming from senior high school okay. because they are encouraged that before they will uh, graduate, mm -hmm. uh, this I believe July 12th, yeah. oh, um, okay. yeah. they yeah. should have at, uh, ah. at least uh, certificates okay. because uh, we cannot expect that these students uh, from uh, uh, from these uh, schools will continue college. Yes, yes, yes. At least uh, if they would want to apply for a job, at mm -hmm. least they have some certificates that they can uh, show. Okay, so wh what did you do? You, you uh, taught uh, them uh, or you had a group of trainers? Uh, that's uh, merely for assessment, ah, for no assessment, more training. Sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But but for those that would really undergo training, they would be coming over to Foundation University. Or we can also do a mobile uh, uh, setup okay. because oh. mo uh, some of our programs are also accredited or, or can cater mobile uh, setup. Ah, okay. But but again, it would depend no mm. on uh, the competency. Mm -mm. Well, this is not going to be true to all, of yes, course. Yes. No? Otherwise, uh, like, like for us an example maybe the bread and pastry yes we can production. do mobile uh, training for bread and ah, pastry okay. we are also registered for kukiri kukiri yes, and okay. we also applied for bookkeeping nc3 uh, as mobile training as well okay i, I can understand for bookkeeping no but mm. for uh, bread and pastry and the kukiri I, i'm glad i'm happy that we are certified no to go on mobile yes uh, because we uh, have uh, the transportation okay, that's needed that's to one, transport yeah. the tools equipment tools, because equipment, we yeah. will be bringing all exactly, the necessary exactly. tools and equipment exactly. to, to the venue yes yes so mm. so we have done that yes, in other yes. words okay mm. yeah I, I and i hope our viewers can also appreciate 
appreciate this, no? That you go yourselves, you yourselves go to the municipality or to the local government unit or perhaps to a school mm. that uh, would be needing uh, yes. these particular skills or competencies. Yes, we, we are still on I Greyhound Friends. Uh, this has truly been a very interesting conversation with Ms. Richie Bongard, our director for the Kinaadman Institute. And yes, we shall be speaking to her some more, especially on the lessons as well as some learnings that we may have gathered out of our particular JDBP program. I Greyhound will be right back. Yes, so we're back on I Greyhound, and we have been speaking with Ms. Richie Bongart, the director of Foundation University's Kina Adman Institute. And yes, Ms. Rich, I truly admire your hopping from one municipality to another, lugging all those equipment, uh, traveling uh, even at day, uh, day or night, no? Uh, and even working during the weekends. But you know, this is something. What 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 pleasure or what satisfaction can we derive, or or at least you can speak from your from your point of view or from your end, no? Oh, having been exposed to all these students, beneficiaries. Uh, from uh, the beneficiaries, um, during our, uh, before the delivery of a certain program, we have orientation, we have to meet the parents, the mm -hmm. teachers, and also the students. And first day, uh, I'm able to see their eagerness mm -hmm. and willingness to explore also. And when I presented the, uh, the university, uh, I let them have virtual tour on mm, our school yeah. and uh, students were really excited um, because they it gives them opportunity to explore and use our facilities because uh, foundation university is not limiting to the facilities that they can uh, explore just for the specific qualification so when they are here we expose them to the different departments as well yeah. so it's uh, it gives them eagerness mm -hmm. and uh, 
another, I would say, satisfaction yeah. on my end is yes, yes. after the conduct of the training, uh, students will be emotional mm. and they share their learnings and then it, it makes me happy as well mm -hmm. to, to share what we have to those that are that belongs to the marginalized sector. Yes, and in fact, now I remember, now that you mentioned beneficiaries, uh, maybe in the future episodes of I Greyhound, I was really thinking of maybe inviting, no, maybe two or three beneficiaries from the various competencies or skills that we have been offering and really get it straight from the mm -hmm. horse's mouth, so mm -hmm. to speak. No, mm -hmm. uh, I have not spoken to anyone except, of course, those that I had been into, no? so like events management. But yes, we see the satisfaction, we see the eagerness of uh, all those who have enrolled in this particular uh, program. But may I ask, Ms. Rich, out of the beneficiaries that you have uh, encountered so far, no? and these are not only senior high school graduates, graduates, mm -hmm. no? but even those who may be out of school, for mm -hmm. example, no? um, you don't really have to give us the exact figure, but like how many uh, proceed to college, something, uh, something like that, N not the um, exact figure, but maybe those that you may have gathered lang from your conversations. From uh, our conversations, because yeah. we were also asking them if they wanted to, to pursue to, to, college. Yeah, right. Yes, they wanted to. Maybe around 60% uh, okay. of them will okay. go to college, but okay. uh, they are also um, uh, going for a different university. Uh, but that's uh, that is, of course, understandable, mm -hmm. no. Uh, but at least the delivering institution or the partner institution that well afforded them no mm -hmm. that particular mm -hmm. skill mm -hmm. uh, is coming from foundation university now my next question miss rich is of course you are the director of kina adman no? and kina adman means for the benefit of our viewers who may not be able to speak uh, the vernacular kina adman means knowledge knowledge no? or okay. skill or skill yes okay so kina adman institute that's how we call it no um, the the individuals who may be recipients of what we offer here, no, uh, especially at Kina Adman Institute, would this be something that, uh, well, of course, that they can, like, uh, encourage other people to do? Of course, no. I think they can do that, no. Like, for example, if I am a beneficiary, uh, I can like pass on the information to friends or maybe family members or to those who would be interested. Yes, uh -oh. uh, they can really pass it on to uh, yes. uh, others that uh -oh. are really interested on yeah, uh, yeah. the program. Right. It's open for all. O open for all, yeah. And I think that is something that we should uh, need to emphasize. No? Mm -hmm. Open to all individuals, not just here at Foundation University, but you can come. No? Mm -hmm. and then later on, you can like inform our viewers how they can get in touch with us here, mm -hmm. uh, how they can go about uh, the the application and so on. Of course, it's through the LGU or mm -hmm. perhaps their schools, no? but it would be really good for us to guide them. Now, uh, in terms of uh, your showing them and also, of course, also handling no? the various skills, you cannot do it all by mm -hmm. yourself, Miss mm -hmm. Rich. No? So you have a team, I understand. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, our office, uh, we are three in our office. Okay. However, in the delivery of the program yes. or the training, yes. um, we have trainers, yes. external and internal okay. trainers that is uh, expert yeah. in that field yeah. that will uh, be the one to deliver the program. Okay, oh, oh. Uh, we can mention some of them, no? I, uh, what I mean are some of these competencies where we have our internal trainers. I know events management we have, yes. no? Uh, okay. For um, let's start with organic agriculture. Okay, yeah, we have yes, uh, yes. trainers. We have four trainers right wow, now. Uh, okay. The dean of the college, Sir Joe Bird. Yes. We also have Ma Marjorie okay. uh, and then Johan. No? Okay. Yeah, and mm -hmm. Sir Jan Ongson. So ah, there are okay. four trainers for organic agriculture. Okay. They they are uh, how do you call them accredited yes. trainers? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's and good. Uh, for other programs like bread and pastry, okay. we have uh, one internal trainer, Sir Bendal. Okay. We are also having several trainers, um, uh, external, external trainers. Okay, yes, that's yes. really good. Oh, oh. And then these are all, uh, as, again, I will have to mention this, no? all accredited no? by, mm -hmm. by TESDA? Yes, oh, it by is TESDA. the TESDA who will accredit okay. that is also based on your industry experience, okay. uh, also your um, I think 
uh, yeah, industry experience, okay. your employment certificate, oh, yeah. your exposure to this uh, yeah. field, yes, and yes. Uh, some other uh, requirements okay. for you to be accredited. Okay, and okay. they are going to, if our viewers would mm -hmm. want to be yeah. a trainer as well. Yes, yes. First is you have to undergo the trainer's methodology yes. training oh, oh, that yeah. is for good for one month. Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, after you pass, then you have to apply again mm -hmm. for NTTC. Mm -hmm. So in the NTTC, there are requirements that you need to pass that includes uh, your employment certificate and exposure on the industry. Uh, what does NTTC mean? National, National Tibet uh, oh, Trainers ah, okay. uh, Certificate. Ah, okay, yes. Oh, oh. But but it's a whole. Uh, no, no. It's quite demanding. Or of course, Miss mm. Rich, right? Mm. Oh, one month. Oh, I think it's going to be really be intensive if you will be apply as a TM or train, trainer's methodology. Yeah, trainer's me methodology. methodology. And then become a trainer. Uh, oh. It's also, um, uh, yes, it mm. demands uh, mm -hmm. uh, time, time, effort. Yeah. Yes, because uh, what you will be learning on the training is uh, for you to uh, prepare your lessons yeah. and actual uh, demonstrate as well how you will act as a trainer because uh, it is uh, not only limited to those education graduates. Yes, you yes. can be a trainer even if uh, uh, you are yeah. not a graduate of uh, education. Oh, yeah. So yes. that's why you have to undergo the training for you to learn on how to deliver the class, right, right. the preparations. So, and yeah. uh, those are the things that you will learn in the trainer's methodology. Yeah, right. And, and it, it's possible that you can be a trainer in various competencies or skills, right? Mm, not, yes, not just in one. Now, after that, uh, I'm, I'm moving forward, no? And uh, really thinking, thinking forward as well. Like, after that, uh, one becomes an assessor. Actually, the is, trainer's uh, methodology, you can do both. Ah, being a trainer and being an assessor, ah, you are trained both. Yes. Ah, okay, yes. okay, okay. Because uh, it's, I think, parallel. Because mm -hmm. if you conduct the training, then you can definitely assess also oh, yes, yes, uh, yes. how the uh, student performs mm -hmm. during the assessment as okay. well. Uh -huh. You know, I'm interested in how students no, cope, for example. We mentioned bookkeeping for that matter. So after the so many number of hours, Hours, so many number of days depending on the frequency you know, of uh, when you are meeting then they are assessed immediately you know? uh, what if this is something that I have in mind I had in mind what if somebody or whoever you know, drops out or quits in the middle of the training or the class oh, in other words he or she will not finish uh, the for, number of hours. Yes, uh -huh. for some reason, if that yeah. student will not uh, complete the training, yes. so first, of course, uh, that student cannot take the assessment because uh, uh -oh. she is not, he or she not ready to yes. take the assessment. Uh -oh. And uh, then that student, uh, especially if scholarship, mm -hmm. uh, I would discourage them to drop out because uh -oh. uh, their names will be flagged as. Um, uh, uh -huh. Okay. Because uh, scholarship, uh, you are also, you have commitment yes, as yes. well to, yeah. if you're given the scholarship, then you need also yes, to yes. Um, uh, prioritize also yes. uh, this commitment. Yeah, right. So right. if, uh, then I would discourage again to mm, drop out mm. because you will be flagged as, um, uh, how do you say that? <laughs> maybe persona non grata or something. No? Something oh, like oh. that. And if you wanted to avail oh, for another oh, scholarship, yes, yes. then you cannot that. avail anymore. Oh, not anymore. Mm. Oh, parang you're labeled, no? Oh, labeled oh. Oh, that you had uh, dropped out mm. or something. Mm. No? Unless it's really for a yes, very valid reason. Yes, perhaps, uh, that's no? also okay. If you can provide a valid reason why you cannot uh, continue, mm -hmm. then the remarks, uh, because right now it's automated as well mm -hmm, somehow mm -hmm. the processes uh, in TESDA mm -hmm. we have this um, uh, registration system mm -hmm. and then it's uh, also tracking the okay, students okay. so if it's valid reason then it will be seen also in the remarks mm -hmm. why you drop out okay okay now how long is a or what is the effectivity of a an NC a national certificate like for example for NC3 
five years or uh, something? Yes, it's all five years, even if it's NC1, NC2, ah, NC3. Okay. Five years yeah. validity. Yes, okay. Now, uh, I have not heard of an NC1. What, what, what would be one skill or competency that is NC1? I've uh, heard of I've NC2 been, yeah. and NC3. Yeah, I've, NC. Uh, Heard that SMAO know. has NC1, so if you uh, cannot. What is that? SMAO uh, is on. Uh, is it a, is, is it welding? a competency? Ah, okay. Welding. So okay. they have uh, uh, SMAO NC1, NC2. So if you NC2. are not done with NC1, you cannot proceed with NC2. NC2, okay. Mm -hmm. But so you have to start out with NC1 first. Uh, ah. Not all programs. Uh, not, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. What, what I mean with, with that welding, mm -hmm. okay, NC1 yes. first. Oh, mm -hmm. Because I know of certain programs that have an NC2 right away, no? Mm -hmm. oh, and then they don't need to go to NC3 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or some programs, of course, like events management that have an NC3 immediately. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, yeah. Am I right? Yes. Rich, oh. uh, the, actually, the higher the level, okay. it's uh, also based on the content of the uh, qualification of program because uh, NC3 directly it's because it involves decision making ah, so not just the skills okay. that you uh, you acquire you will also be have, uh, having to uh, learn how to decide so it's uh, per qualification is different okay. so if you only would like to learn this uh, skill mm -hmm. then maybe it's only NC1 and then if it involves a lot okay. of uh, that is being merged in one qualification yes, yes. So that's why the higher the level, the competencies that you are acquire is more than the uh, just the NC one. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I was in fact uh, curious about it because, like, okay, you mentioned NC one. Now I'm glad that I already know that there is an NC one also. Mm -hmm. Then we go to NC two, and then NC three. So in other words, the higher is there no NC four anymore? There are also in ah, other programs. Okay. NC4. Okay. So the higher the how would you call that? The level, no? Mm. Uh, the greater the skills or competencies yes, are, no? Yes. But mostly on decision making and perhaps. Uh, yeah, some uh, involves managerial decision ah, making. Okay, so okay. that's why it's a higher level. Okay, okay. But are there programs that would not really require decision making? I wonder. Uh, uh, not, not to demean any program mm -mm. for that matter, no? But let us say, I think for contact center services, I think it's only up to NC2. Am mm. I right? Mm. Okay, so uh, no requirement for decision making or other higher levels of competencies mm, mm. okay and then for bread and pastry I think they require up to NC3 uh, NC2 NC2 for now. okay and, and then housekeeping I, I think you mentioned housekeeping how uh, housekeeping there's an NC3 as well mm -hmm. um, uh, for example, NC2 is more on uh, you will only acquire skills mm -hmm. and then uh, later on uh, if it's higher the it's like uh, also like managerial side mm -hmm. but in housekeeping i cannot um, discuss mm -mm. more because yeah, yeah. i'm also not so familiar yeah. uh -uh. but i've heard uh, in uh, kokiri okay. there's uh, kokiri in c3 which you are going for example kokiri in c2 you will be taught how to cook uh, specific mm. meals and mm -hmm. stuff and for if you are going to pursue nc uh, three mm -hmm. then uh, for example uh, your task will be uh, how to uh, uh, if there's a catering huge number of uh, guests uh, you will also do costing so the higher the level um, there will be a sort of difficulty on the task that you're going to perform and yeah. learn yeah uh, what, what are at least from your perspective uh, miss rich and from your experience what are the most popular uh, programs the most popular uh, programs based on the uh, number of enrollees mm -hmm. that we have uh, for the JDVP program, there are a lot who enrolled in computer system servicing oh, okay. and uh, also with uh, test the scholarship grants that we receive. Um, they are also uh, they would like to enroll also in bread and pastry mm, production okay oh, oh. these are skills really that are very much in demand no mm. uh, not only here of course but even abroad now uh, again the attraction no? or the benefit one gets if if you are able to get an nc or something mm. no um, is is priceless no uh, incomparable uh, if you do not have one but uh, but uh, for those who may go into such misreach, no, uh, 
uh, again, again, although this is very attractive, but you know, I'm just playing the devil's advocate here. Uh, but we encourage these individuals to really go go find a job or perhaps still pursue a higher degree. I, I'm, I'm just thinking aloud, really. Would I, for example, no? Um, would I encourage students or anyone to 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 take this skill? or go for a higher degree, I, I wonder. Or if they are able to find a job, then why go to a higher degree program? Mm -mm. Uh, for, uh, I would say that uh, uh, based on my experience yes. again, yes, uh, yes. I did not stop on just one NC. Okay. Because, yeah, um, you're talking about your oh, oh, reference. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Yeah, better, better so that way. Yeah. I think if you okay. are, uh, because prior to having this full-time okay. job in FU, yes. I also, um, even if I graduated um, you, you Bachelor, here, right? yes, here, yes. Bachelor okay, okay. of Science in Management Accounting, yes. okay. and I couldn't still figure out if I want to go to that direction, being uh -oh. uh, an accounting staff or okay. and such. And that's the, uh, oh, because when I am uh, uh, having my college years here, mm -hmm. I also accumulate national certificates oh. of different uh, programs. Very good. Yeah. So I would say that it opens uh, a lot of doors yeah. for me because I have several uh, qualifications and it's uh, diverse also. Yeah. It opens um, doors for me to right. other programs other than just accounting. Yes, yes. So I would say that um, do not limit yourself yes. on only one program right. and if you are able or if you can manage to go to a university mm -hmm. or in um, okay. to that to get a degree yeah. then just do it yes yes right because i think um earlier or way back no this was really the objective of tesda no mm -hmm. or in fact not only tesda but uh, the senior high school program or, or the tbl tbl stands for technology uh, uh, techno tech uh, uh, TBL, tech book, right? Technology, lively, vocational, um, right? And livelihood. livelihood. Oh, oh. But, but that is a track yes. in senior high school, right? Oh, and then these are the ones who are encouraged yes. to get a, uh, a competency or a skill mm. uh, through the JDVP no, program. Yes. But um, yes, but again, the, 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 the opportunity, you know, of uh, going into a higher uh, college degree, mm or maybe pursuing other NCs, mm -hmm. no? not just a college mm -hmm. degree, but other NCs like what you did, no, Miss Rich. I think, oh, oh laudable. Uh, so, so yes, you know, that's really very good, no? Uh, talking to our viewers, in fact, don't, don't be like content to just having one, one certification, mm -hmm. right? Or oh, you can have several, really. And, and to top it all, this is for free, right? Yes, oh, oh, yes. yes. Oh, oh, wow, that's really the attraction, really, yes. So, uh, in other words, Miss Rich, out of the experiences also, no, of our beneficiaries, um, I, I'm, I'm, again, I'm just uh, being curious here, no, uh, what, what, uh, Things have they shared probably, no? Maybe during the culminating program or something, no? Maybe they may have shared some of their insights or uh, learnings, no? Or awakening moments because they took this uh, particular program. Yes, actually, um, uh, we had our to end our training. We have our culminating activity, and uh, their trainers choose a representative mm. uh, to speak. Um, on their learnings or, or uh, their journey as JDVP uh, beneficiaries. Well, uh, they are very thankful, of course, um, Foundation University and also to the trainers because what they experience here is some sort of an immersion mm. uh, on their end. And they have actual experiences on, uh, for example, computer systems. Uh, one of their skills is they have to assemble and disassemble mm -hmm. a system unit and make it the, uh, make it work and things like that. Uh, because of um, uh, right now, uh, DepEd cannot provide yet the needed facilities in their uh, in the certain school then uh, that's why they partner with us so those uh, experiences that they were not able to experience in their uh, classroom uh, they were able to experience here in uh, uh, 
during the JDVP uh, journey. So they are very grateful and yes, thankful yes. for that experience. Yes, really very nice. No? Uh, so for example, I, I'd like to get, of course, I see some of them uh, in your posts on mm -hmm. Facebook, but maybe you can describe a typical culminating um, activity. Like, like what, what happens or what transpires in a particular culminating activity? Our culminating activity is just like um, a graduation. Graduation, <laughs> yes, oh, I was about to say that. Graduation yeah. because okay, graduation. Uh, I'm happy to see also parents that's mm. very supportive even if they are from Mabinay, okay. they come all the way here mm -mm. just to witness their uh, kids and they are so uh, proud mm -mm. Uh, that they're uh, uh, kids, if may, they may not be able to go to college mm -hmm. at this in this uh, uh, journey, they were able to go to. Uh, we had our graduation in the Sofia Solar Cinco oh, Hall. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yes, uh, they are very proud of yeah. that uh, experience. Yes, oh, that, that's really nice. And then again, I'm curious, what do you do in a culminating activity for bread and pastry? They, they really cook or something? Um, or? We do not do that uh -huh. in. Uh, because it's graduation. like a formal graduation, ah, okay. our culminating yes, yes, yes. activity. Oh, oh. But prior to that, prior to their assessment, they have to, uh, they prepare. call it MAC assessment, ah, wherein okay. they have to prepare bread. Oh, okay. What are those competencies that they need to um, gain or yeah. acquire, then they have to do it during the MAC assessment. Oh, oh. MAC assessment means that they are not yet uh, like strictly assessed? No? They but are, are assessed in uh, internally or uh, by their trainer, not ah, okay. the assessors oh, oh. yet. Not the assessor, but the assessor, uh, if they're going to really be assessed, uh, comes from TESDA. Yes. Ah, okay. So that's really, really, really nice. No? And mm -hmm. uh, how about forging uh, friendships uh, among the students? Does that happen, of course? Yes, no? yes. Because uh -oh. um, in, um, in a school, there are a number of students. Uh, for example, we arrange it by batch. So they are also... Uh, and not force, but they mm. will be grouped with the other school. Ah, so, yes. of course, okay. um, uh, during culminating activity, they will be also emotional mm. because they will part ways yeah, somehow right. with the newly found friendship. Yes, yes. And it also creates bonding yeah. um, mm -hmm. to uh, the rest because imagine that they are going to stay in uh, one house yeah. or all of them. So. It's it's a nice uh, I yeah. will I would say journey. Yeah, so it's like a class. It's like really being in a class. Uh, you have a teacher, you have a mm -hmm. trainer, oh, and then at the end you would be assessed, or mm -hmm. and then you're going to have a graduation. Mm -hmm. Really very nice. Now with a few minutes that we have left, Miss Rich, I think we promised our viewers that you would inform them how they can go about it, especially if they'd like to enroll or be a part of our JDVP program. Yeah, you have the floor. Okay, um, yes to our viewers, if you want to be, uh, for JDVP, mm. if you want to be part of JDVP program, then of course uh, it will go through uh, DepEd mm. and also to the specific schools. So they are the one who will uh, screen the, uh, the, the applicants. But if you are interested for our program offerings, textbook courses or short courses, then you uh, can reach us in our uh, Facebook page. It's very active. Uh, Foundation U the Tech Book mm -hmm. uh, or Foundation U the Tech Book Department. Mm -hmm. That's our Facebook page and message us mm -hmm. as to what programs you are interested. And uh, to those that are uh, working in the industry already, then you and you, you want to have an assessment. Foundation University is now accredited assessment centers for 10 programs. So if it's okay, I will mention those programs. We are assessment center for organic agriculture production NC2, uh, bookkeeping NC3, um, um, bread and pastry production, cookery NC2, events management services, uh, food and beverage services, three, trainers method, methodology, 
and um, yes, 10 programs that we have right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. So that's how they can get in touch with us mm -hmm. here. No? Miss Rich, you know, I always say this to you, but I admire what you do. Practically, it's a, of course, you have a staff, but I see you moving from one uh, school to another, making sure that everything is speak and span. And I saw how really well taken care of we were when we were in your events. Ma I think we were together yes. in the events <laughs> management class, and uh, we had one particular trainer, and we said, that's Mr. Antonio Bendal. Yes. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Once again, Miss Rich, I know that you have a busy schedule when the Cla when classes start, but even if classes are not yet uh, going to start, you have uh, ongoing, right? Ongoing JDVP um, activities or something? Um, or our JDVP is or already done. Uh, done already, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Are, all the our beneficiaries are also assessed. Oh, yes, so, yes. Okay. Yes, so, and uh, right now we are uh, having um, the upcoming uh, implementation will be on the LGU, TESDA Scholarship Grants. Aye, okay. So, uh, yes, yes. Uh, we will be in Valencia. Mm -hmm. We will be conducting training there. We will be also in Basay, mm -hmm. Tayasan, Himalalod, and some programs will be here in Dumaguete City. Yes, wow. Really busy schedule for our <laughs> Kina Adman Institute. Thank you once again, Miss Rich, huh? and hope to have you again. And perhaps we can have uh, maybe two or three beneficiaries from each of the competencies or skills that you can invite here with you. Thank you very much once again. So with that, friends, we bring to a close another episode of I Greyhound. We hope we can see you, of course, again uh, in our future episodes. Please do not forget our replays every Friday and Saturday from 2 o'clock in the afternoon to 3 in the afternoon on Channel 6 of Field Products TV Dumaguete. And yes, we are also being streamed live on the Facebook page of Foundation University. Thank you very much once again to Miss Nicole Kalumpang for my very chic outfits on the show as always. This has been Cecile Henove bidding everyone a pleasant evening.